Don Mazzella here again for Small Business Digest. And I'm happy to say I can pronounce the, uh, our guest today, Edward Yao. Uh, he doesn't know it, but I often have trouble uh, with some of our guest names. But he's here to um, talk about something that's uh, very important. Uh, I feel important. You know, um, small business, we all agree we're facing uh, problems. But, uh, you know, uh, people come on and say that we, we, these are the problems. But he has maybe some of the solutions. But before we do, get to them, uh, Ed, welcome to the program. And tell us a little bit about yourself, your company, and finally a website. Awesome. Well, glad to be here. Um, you know, a little bit about myself. Uh, I have been in the small business space for um, my entire career. I, I, I look, I think, younger than I am, but I'll let, uh, I'll let your audience decide. Um, I have, uh, I started off in management consulting and then quickly ended up starting Canada's first daily deal company. Uh, we grew that to over 130 people, uh, worked with over 10,000 small businesses across Canada. And it was, um, a, a challenging, but very rewarding experience. Um, and that's where we got a lot of exposure to how small businesses work, uh, why it's so difficult, right? It's the only job in the world where you have to be good at dentistry or plumbing and also be good at marketing you have to be good at recruiting accounting and you have to do everything and you know we have a saying jack of all trades master of none and it's, it's you know it's it's the only job in the world where you have to do you literally are expected to be um uh, executing on all of those cogs um, which is what led us to start one local um and and what you uh what you see when you look at our website and what you see when you, you know, when you have conversations with us is addressing those pain points. We take all of the 200 plus processes that John, you know, um, the plumber or uh, John, the dentist uh, need to be doing to grow their clinics or their businesses, whether that's soliciting reviews, responding um, to customer inquiries, um, optimizing their website, um, you know, and, and, and so on. Uh, and we take that all off of their plate. Um, and so we are, you know, on, uh, at the forefront, uh, a full stack marketing offer, uh, offering for small businesses. Uh, and in the back end, because everything is integrated and we provide that in-house specialist um, specialization um, in one platform, we're able to do these things at a much higher um, or much more automated and pass those savings on to those end business owners. And your website? Uh, our website is www.onelocal.com, all spelled out, www.onelocal.com. Okay, let's back up a little bit and talk. When you say one local, we're talking about local businesses, your plumber, your, um, your dentist, et cetera. Am I correct? That's Absolutely. What, so you, you're in effect saying... Uh, we'll come in and help you um, uh, com uh, compete in your your community. Am I he hearing it correctly? You, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, Don, when you say compete, there's a lot of things that go into what competing means. If you were to rewind you know, 25 years ago, uh, competing meant maybe putting a sign on your front door, and the the uh, the saying "location, location, location" was very relevant. Um, then yellow pages came along and you needed to be listed in the yellow pages, but with digital, um, and you know, the, the evolution of the internet and the mobile web, uh, it's complete, it's it, where people reside has become very fragmented. Um, and it's become exponentially more complicated to compete, uh, in your local space. You need to have a mobile optimized website. You need to show up on Google. You need to have social, uh, and it's no longer just listing in the yellow pages. Okay. Oh, oh, let's oh, so let's uh, uh, focus in on that. So let us say you're the local. Well, hardware stores wrong because the, many of them are on the, uh, independent. The hardware stores just don't exist anymore. The, but let's talk of uh, drapery store. Let's start with that. Okay, uh, drapery uh, store traditionally uh, draws from a larger uh area than say uh, uh, a, 
something else. What would you do for the drapery owner who comes to you and says, look, I've got to improve my business. How do I do it? That's a great, and it's, it's a great question. Um, it, if I could get us to use pretend, potentially a different industry, drapery is, you know, to your point, um, more of a retailer. Our, our specialties um, are with service providers who have okay. uh, service areas, if you will. Okay, um, and, well, let's, and, take and let's take Okay, plumbing. perfect. Perfect. And so um, in, this, in this scenario, uh, let's say John uh, is the owner of a plumbing business. Uh, we would, um, you know, optimize every part of his customer's journey from discovery, attraction, conversion to re and retention. Um, when it comes to attraction, it's about making sure that when a customer is looking for a plumber, you're showing up. Um, that means you need to have an SEO, SEO or search engine optimized website with relevant keywords. You need to have your advertisement accurately targeted so that prospective customers are finding you um, in the areas or the, the, the websites that they are um, residing on or, or engaging with. Um, and then once you do, once you do get someone to engage um, and they start to do their research, do you have uh, enough information that's going to help that customer end up choosing you? Whether that's reviews, um, what, do you have uh, pictures of your services or of, of to get the customer, give the customer a feel of who the type of company you are, whether that's on your website or on your socials? Does your website load fast enough? Um, you know, if your website loads slowly, uh, the patience now amongst the customer or prospective customers is at an all time low. Um, and so if your website loads slowly, um, and that can be because of the way you have it set up, that could also be because uh, things have changed on the mobile uh, browser or on the browsers that people are using that change the requirements. Um, you know, not too long ago, Google changed uh, Chrome. And if you didn't have an SSL that was, uh, uh, up to date, it would flag your URL bar. Uh, these are things that can cost you conversions. And then when the customer does ultimately choose to engage with you, um, are you asking them to email you? Are you asking them to fill out a form, call you? How is it? Uh, how are you uh, engaging or uh, facilitating that um, that request or that inbound interest? Uh, in the the best practice is to fulfill it in a way that the customer wants to and not force them into a channel. So that means a uh, more omni-channel of, of an approach. But if you are, um, uh, sorry, one second. Um, if you are, um, uh, you know, uh, taking in that uh, interest and um, you, how are you communicating that you have received that interest? Um, you know, an example is if you take a phone call and uh, you don't answer and you ask these and you ask your customers or your prospective customers to leave a voicemail um, that's going to encourage that customer to continue their search and you know the list goes on all the way through retention and generating referrals but there are over 200 tasks that or processes that we have mapped out that the average business owner needs to be doing if they really want to maximize the likelihood that they're going to grow their business uh, and we take all of that on for them well, you, you, you touched on the one that to me is the most important. If my plumber doesn't answer the phone, I get worried and then I go on. How do you help uh, individual companies um, eliminate that problem or minimize it? So there's twofold. Um, one, when you end up on one of our clients' websites, uh, you can text in, um, but assuming you choose to phone in, You okay, Don? Yes, I'm here. I just I, I used the cough button. Oh, nice. Oh, uh, yeah. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. Um, the if there are many ways we support, uh, you know, like I mentioned, um, an omni approach into how we're going to take in that customer's interest and intent. If you end up calling and choosing to call, we can absolutely support that, uh, and we will ring the business's phone line depending on how the business is set up and their their preference, we can ring the phone line directly, uh, or we can pass that on to uh, AI receptionist that we would help you set up uh, in our platform. Um, and so 
it, whether or not it goes direct, rings a couple of times and ends up with us or directly brings us first, you can train um, a, a bot um, or a, a receptionist, a digital receptionist. Think of it like Siri to respond to that phone call for you. Uh, they'll, they can, you can choose the voice, you can tailor what they say, but we can um, facilitate that call uh, and confirm at least uh, a callback time or a booking on your behalf. Well, that's very interesting. I'd love to follow that f further because uh, I, I happen to run into a statistic that uh, plumbers lose 17% of their initial calls because they, they don't answer the phone. 17 or 70? 17. Oh, nice. Um, I, I, I think it's higher than that, but yes, 17 is, 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 uh, is not surprising. And, and when you consider that, uh, you're talking about... Uh, uh, the key question is your bot answer the question, how much does it cost? So, because that seems to be the third question uh, uh, in dealing with plumbing uh, is how, mu how much is it going to cost me for you to come out and uh, uh, look at my uh, uh, overflowing washing machine? And it's, and so there are, with every industry that we work with, there are nuances. Um, and the the beautiful um, uh, aspect of AI is that it will continue to get better as you feed it more information. At our current stage, where we would take that phone call, and unless there are specific mappings as to what we want to instruct the bot to say, uh, we would instead encourage the customer to book a consultation um, and lock in that intent. Intent so as to discourage them from continuing on with their search, right? They have gone and they have decided they're going to call, call John's business. They looked at his reviews. They looked at the website and said, you know what? I want to interact with John. Our job is to confirm that John understands and is going to um, facilitate this interaction to discourage them from continuing their, their search because you don't want to continue to looking and mm -hmm. going through that process as a customer over and over again. You want to know that someone is going to get back to you uh, or you have already communicated it and, and you are progressing down that path to get your remedy for your plumbing issue. Are reviews important? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think there's a common stat, 92% of people check reviews before they make a purchase. But, but are they real? Yeah, absolutely. They're, I mean, I think Google is getting better and better at making sure um, that the uh, onus uh, of legitimate reviews um, is is uh, more and more reputable of what makes it on online, uh, and it's it's paramount, right? You, you're not you're not alone. I go on Amazon, and every once in a while, you read some reviews and you think, are you know are these real? Um, and I think it's up to the platforms to make sure that they are uh, enforcing that. Uh, and making sure that the quality is, it continues to get better, but our customers um, or our businesses are unable or, or have the, the way that we help them uh, generate reviews is making it easy for their real customers to leave reviews. Um, and I think over time, as you aggregate more and more reviews um, to your profiles, you'll be able to s tell the difference between the real ones and the not. Um, and then also the hope is that the platforms get better and better and they will at did, streaming out the fake reviews. We're talking with Ed, Edward Yao, your company again, and your, your website? My company's name is One Local, and the website is www.onelocal.com. Okay, well, uh, let's go a little further into this. How do you deal with, the, with someone that says uh, your, your Chinese restaurant, uh, the food was awful, and they said no MSG, but I found, got all the MSG... Uh, but I had to go to the hospital. What do you, how do you handle a situation like that? Well, I think transparency uh, is very important. And I think as the consumer base or as society gets more comfortable with online reviews, I mean, relative to uh, how long the internet has been around, um, you know, the prevalence of online reviews, uh, you know, has been for has been around for a while as well. But relative to just how customers make the decision, you know, we haven't had online reviews for very long. And we are seeing the evolution of how the customer thinks through them, right? But originally, it was, this was everything. This was this was fact. 
Um, and to your point on, you know, it's, people are starting to realize there can be gamification of these reviews. And I think now we're at the point where people are starting to uh, understand that there can be gamification and then there, there are um, two sides to every story. And so as a business owner responding to those reviews transparently, um, but not being too, I think, candid, but at the same time balancing out, not being too pacifying or patronizing uh, is, 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 the right, is striking the right balance is the, probably the most difficult part, but redressing that, that conversation. Uh, you know, if, it, if it's honest feedback and it's something that they want to apply um, to their business and improving what they do, they should absolutely comment on that. If they um, disagree with the accusation um, or have a rational, rational rationale as to why they use the level of MSG that they do, they should definitely respond to that. And then the customer base can review that feedback, uh, that negative review and the response and make their own decision. No, I wish I could agree with you, but I just don't see it that way because it, it seems to me that uh, uh, the, the negative reviews uh, seem to come from a smaller segment of the, popula of the population. It seems to me there are people out there that do nothing but be negative. Yeah, it's true. They're, they're, I mean, you, there are trolls on the internet. Um, and, um, and it's just part, I think, of today's internet and today's society. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if, are you suggesting not responding? I'm not suggesting anything because I haven't figured it out. I, um, I'm so far behind on social media as the, uh, 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 as to be a, a Neanderthal. But the point I'm trying to make is it, uh, we, we recently saw a Chinese restaurant. We moved to Wilmington and it, it said, had five star reviews. So we went down to see it and there's a little hole in the wall and the food was atrocious. Okay. Well, um, yet if you read the reviews, it was, uh, you know, it was rated number one in Wilmington. Um, did you leave I, a review? What? Did you leave a review? Um, I did because it's, it's not my nature to leave a review. My wife will leave a review. We were just surprised <coughs> that um, this had evidently built it up because... Uh, and well, let's go on because this is uh, this is your time, not my time. Uh, 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 let's go on. What are some of the other things that your company does that can help us a, a local business? Um, I mean, I, I think I spoke about a, a lot of them. Um, we review. We help with review management. We help with your online profiles, your listings management, your website. Uh, you know, there's over 200 things that we help with. Um, was there anything in, in particular that, that you wanted to speak about? Well, well, well do, do you provide, uh, can I, can uh, the, uh, the client call up and talk to somebody in your company? There's the, uh, the client can talk to one of our AI bots um, and we would set that up for our business owner that will learn and, and uh, continue to evolve uh, and mm -hmm. get better in how they're responding. Um, but, it, you know, currently, yeah, we would be able to help them facilitate that call, you know, speaking to something like a Siri. How about your pricing? How does the pricing work for your system? Uh, it, so there's, we have different packages um, to help businesses uh, address different needs. If you are a business owner who's really good with web um, and you are very comfortable, you may not need web presence. And we would help you with maybe your engagement on how you facilitate those calls and how you engage with your customers, solicit feedback. Um, and so we have a package um, to help with engagement. We have a package with, around your web presence and we have a package around um, ad management um, and social media management. Now, what do they run about? Monthly, do you charge monthly by contract? How does it everything work? Is, everything is um, on a monthly uh, subscription and um, they are, uh, they're, pat they're priced relative to uh, uh, what we would otherwise as a business owner have to pay uh, in salary. Um, and so, you know, the closest equivalent, if you were to look at what is in the marketplace, there's 7,000 self-service tools 
but they require that business owner, John, that we were speaking about earlier to go and optimize or manage these tools. Um, and a lot of these business owners don't have time or the expertise to be able to deliver on that. And so that doesn't work. And so they end up hiring help. Um, they either hire a full-time marketing coordinator or they hire their nephew, their niece. Um, and, you know, if you were to pay uh, someone $20, $25 an hour um, full-time for the year, you know, you're looking at over $50,000 a year. And that's just one person, not likely not specialized in, in any of the fields. Every one of our offerings, you know, has specialists built in okay. internally. Just give me one, so, one price for one offering. If you were to take everything, how about that? If you were to take everything for uh, from one local, um, it, it would be twelve hundred dollars a month. Twelve hundred a month. That's a okay. We're getting close to the end. What would you like to leave our audience with? But well, first, tell us the website. Your website again, and spell it out. Our website is uh, www.onelocal.com. So O N E L O C A L. And, you know, what I would like to leave to any small business owner uh, that's watching this is that, you know, thank you for, for what you do. You make up more than 90% of the economy and uh, it, it is by no means the it, easy. Um, small, our, our line is small business is, is not easy, but our goal is to make it so. Okay. Well, on that note, Edward Yao. We say thank you so much for, well, certainly I learned a lot. I hope our audience did as well.